Hi, my name is Massimo Referre, and I'm going to show you how Amazon ECS Anywhere works with this simple demo. In this demo, we're going to deploy first this um, simple application in the cloud to show you how it works uh, in the cloud and with ECS deployment um, in the region. The first step is going to deploy this architecture here. As you can see, my application runs, it's a Python application that runs in this ECS task that in turn runs on um, AWS Fargate. The way this application works is as follows. We're going to put some files on a EFS share, in particularly in a, in, a ins, in a source directory of this EFS share. We're going to put messages uh, in an Amazon SQS queue that the application will read in a continuous loop. When there is a match between the file name and the message in the SQS queue, the application will compute the um, the data. Uh, when I say compute in the for the purpose of this application, I mean it will rename the file and it will move it to another folder. This should be representative uh, or ideally representative of what a, a task could do, for example, on your data. Last but not least, the task will log into CloudWatch uh, what it has done. In this demo, we want to first deploy this in the cloud and then we also want to deploy this outside of the cloud, mimicking uh, how the very same application, the very same code could run in a task, uh, in an ECS task outside uh, of the region and particularly in a customer data center. As you can see, the task will continue to read from the Amazon SQS queue, but in this case, the data are not going to be on an EFS share. The data are going to remain in the customer data center and the task will act on the data that are in the customer um, data center. So let's move into uh, the actual uh, demo. The demo is comprised of three main parts. Um, I have already done the prerequisite. We're going to deploy the application in region. We're going to prepare the external um, setup and we're going to actually deploy on the external uh, setup that we have just made. So how are we going to deploy in the region? In order to be able to deploy in the region and satisfy all the prerequisites that my application has, I'm going to use um, the Docker Compose integration that we recently announced. Um, if you have not been following along uh, all the uh, latest news about ECS, we have built an um, Docker Compose integration with ECS that allows you to, um, to sketch very simple YAML files, as you can see here. This is the one that I'm using in order to bring up a somewhat complex uh, stack. Let's go through very briefly about what this does. So I'm going to declare a service uh, which is going to be uh, turned into an, an ECS service with this Docker Compose uh, syntax. I'm going to call it um, ECS worker in region. I'm going to pass a number of variables like the SQS queue URL uh, and also the EFS source and destination folders, data uh, source folder and data destination folder. These are the two folders that uh, the application is going to use to move uh, data back and forth. The region, the image that I'm going to use in this case, I'm using this um, in this image that has already been uh, created. And the other thing that I'm doing is I'm declaring a volume. Now, when I'm deploying this uh, with standard Docker Compose, this will create a Docker volume uh, on your laptop. But leveraging this integration, this will create an actual EFS share on AWS, which I'm then going to mount into this um, folder inside the container. Last but not least, what this integration allows you to do is to create particular um, EM policies. Like in this case, I'm asking this integration to create a policy that allows my task to access this queue uh, in order to be able to read uh, messages from that queue. 
if I go on the console and if I check what um, I have available, as you can see, I don't have any uh, or I only have three CloudFormation uh, stacks already running. This is my queue, uh, main queue that I've already uh, pre-created. And this is my ECR um, repo. This is the uh, container image that I'm going to use uh, to create that architecture. However, if I go into the ECS uh, UI, there is nothing here, okay? There is no um, cluster whatsoever uh, in the region other than the default. Uh, also, there is no EFS share whatsoever in the region. So let's go back and let's launch uh, these. So I'm in the directory that includes this Docker Compose file. So I'm just going to do Docker Compose up. What this is going to do, it's going to translate this very simple and elegant Docker Compose file into a very big uh, CloudFormation template that represents the, the architecture that I have described in the first um, part of this demo and that I have already simply described with this YAML over here. So as you can see, uh, this integration has already started deploying this. It will take a few minutes, uh, but let's see how it's going to start. As you can see, it has already started this deployment process. As I said, it will take a few minutes. So I'll, I'll come back when this is done. The um, stack has completed. If I go back here, I should see that it has completed. It took a few uh, minutes, uh, two, three minutes uh, to deploy. Um, let's see what it has done. Uh, so if I go here and I refresh these, I should see a new cluster in a region because that's the project name, the Docker Compose project name. As you can see, there is one service and one task because that's what uh, was in the Docker um, Compose. If I go on the EFS, I should see the EFS that has been created for me. So this is the actual EFS file system that it has created um, to be able uh, to land those files. Uh, last but not least, if I go in CloudWatch, I should see uh, the Docker Compose in region um, um, log group. Um, and I can see the log streams here. Uh, this is the application log stream. So as you can see, um, my application is already starting uh, to log, like it's initializing the bottle client and anything that it needs to do. Now it's entering the infinite queue monitoring loop. So basically it's waiting for uh, doing work. So let's see um, what we can do here. So I have from this Cloud9 environment, I have already mounted uh, the EFS share. So if I go in here, I should see the two folders. These are the two folders that the application is using. I'm accessing that folder from the outside of the application, but I can still uh, manipulate them. So they should be um, empty. Yes, they are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, start creating um, a few files in the source folder. Uh, I'm going to call them 001, uh, 002, 003, 004, and 005. So now there are uh, three files uh, in the source folder and no files in the destination folder. So let's go here in the Amazon SQS queue in my main queue, which is the, the queue that uh, the application is uh, pulling from. So I'm going to send a few messages here. I'm going to send 001. I'm going to send 002. 3. 4. Let's go back here and see what happened. As you can see, files are already disappearing uh, from the source folder and they're being moved into the destination folder um, with the suffix has been processed. This is just for demo purposes, just to show you how these files are taken, um, uh, processed, uh, quote to quote, and moved into another folder. 
Um, now only four files have been moved uh, and the fifth one has not been moved simply because um, there wasn't a message that would match it. So if I send the fifth one, that should disappear and the fifth file has been moved. So that's what the application does. Uh, it should have also been logging in here. Yeah, and it has logged into CloudWatch. So it just said processing file data source folder 001 and moving into, so other than moving actually the file, it has been uh, logging uh, that it has been moving the file. In the next part of the demo, we are going to prepare the on-prem environment to be able to deploy the very same application, very same architecture on-prem in your data center. Okay, let's prepare the on-prem environment. We're going to work primarily from this window here. This is going to be our main console, so to speak, where we're preparing that environment. That environment has, is um, represented by these two windows over here. So they're called um, instance A and instance B. They both run in an on-prem quote-to-quote environment. Uh, they're uh, based on Ubuntu uh, 20 um, with Docker installed because I uh, just installed Docker on these two. Um, there is nothing obviously running uh, on these instances so far and we're going to prepare them to be able to uh, become part um, of an ECS cluster. But before we dive into this, uh, let's go and see what we're going to do. So we have completed this uh, part of setting up the, um, the individual environment. We're going to move to the um, second part of this demo, which is the external part preparation. For this, I have a couple of scripts that we are going to run. There is a main script that we're going to run in this main uh, console. And there are also two scripts that we need to run on these two instances because we need to install the SSM agent, which is a prerequisite um, to make this ECS Anywhere solution work. So let's get started um, with uh, the second part. Uh, so we're going to... Uh, move into uh, the directory here, and we're going to launch uh, the main setup external script. All right, so it says that we're going to uh, prepare the environment. We're going to work out of US East 1 because this is the region that we're using for uh, this demo. Uh, one note is that uh, we're using some uh, development environment here uh, so most of the things that we're creating with this script won't show up uh, in the production console but I will show you um, a, a development console that will show you uh, what we're uh, doing here so I'm setting environment variables for this particular reason because we're not pointing to production but to this uh, development environment and the first thing that we do is we create a cluster okay uh, if you remember, in the in-region deployment, we have created um, an in-region cluster or may, um, the, the Docker Compose integration has created a, a dedicated cluster. We're going to create a new cluster for um, this on-prem uh, capacity. So it's now creating a new cluster. The, the other thing that we're doing is we're going to create um, SSM keys because these are the keys that we're going to need to be able to connect these two instances that you see at the bottom, instance A and instance B, um, to uh, SSM in order to move forward. So it's now creating these SSM keys and it's now saying stop here and go to those instances uh, to install the SSM agent. Um, I'm going to export uh, this variable here um, as you can see, the cluster name is being called external and I'm, um, uh, and I'm um, uh, basically um, setting this in this environment variable. So we have um, exported this on these two instances. The script, the um, SSM script is already running uh, on, I'm sorry, is already present on these instances. So we'll just run uh, this. 
And basically what's doing, it's, it's downloading the um, Ubuntu Snap for the SSM agent. Um, it's going to take a few seconds uh, to do that. And it's going to use those keys, those activation ID and activation code to register into SSM. So it's almost complete. Uh, it's setting up the profiles and everything. Okay, uh, the uh, script has completed and I'm going to run um, the very same script on the other instances. For the purpose of this demo, I'm doing this all manual just to walk you through uh, the steps required underneath uh, to make it work. But obviously in a production environment, you won't need um, to run this manually if you don't want to. So same thing, it's grabbing the snap um, and it's setting up the SSM agent using the same activation ID and activation code that I provided. Okay, it seems that uh, it's been registered, so we can go back to the main script and hit enter. Okay, it, it has found two instances, two managed instances. With these, I'm querying SSM and I'm asking SSM, give me the list of managed instances that you have. And in fact, there are two managed instances, which is this one and this other one. And basically, it's now going to install the ECS agent on those instances. So what I'm going to do, because the um, SSM agent is represented by um, in a Docker, com a Docker container that is going to spin up on these instances. I'm going to watch Docker PS these two instances and see when that uh, container comes up. So uh, what I'm doing in this main window is that I'm using now SSM uh, to send the package, the ECS agent package to these two instances for the ECS agent uh, to be set up. And it's launching the remote setup of the ECS agent on these two instances. It will take a few minutes uh, to uh, grab the package. These two instances are going to take a few minutes to download uh, this package. So I'm going to pause here and come back um, when this is done. Okay, the agent uh, has started and um, they should have joined the cluster uh, by now, the cluster that we have just created with the main script. So let's go and just check to make sure uh, the status of the ECS agents and particularly the packages. Um, yeah, as you can see, they have been uh, successfully installed. Um, keep in mind that this is still um, early uh, stages. Um, of these uh, tooling, so you may see install errors that um, are, are, are okay for the purpose of our demo. Let's now check the ECS uh, cluster. We should have a couple of uh, container instances. As a matter of fact, it has a couple of container instances, which are the two that we have just registered. Um, as I alluded to, this is not running in a production deployment, so I won't see this cluster in my production um, environment where I have def uh, uh, deployed the in-region uh, cluster. Uh, but um, let me check uh, if in the development um, console I see the new cluster and the new container instances. So I have connected to the VPN in order to um, get access to this development environment. Um, as you can see, I didn't have any cluster in here. Let's see if I refresh. Um, if I see the new external cluster, here you are, and the two container instances, um, as you can see here. Um, if I click on this uh, cluster, ECS instances, yeah, never mind about the agent, this is still, still in development. These are the two instances that I just um, as you, as you can see, they are uh, SSM managed instances, so they're not running uh, in the cloud. 
So this concludes the second part, the preparation uh, of the environment. The last part will actually deploy our application. So let's see. Let's start the last part of this demo, which is the part where we actually deploy the task on the on-prem instances. So we have, as a recap, the cluster with the two container instances that you can see underneath here. They are both running the ECS agent that we started in the previous session. What we're going to do now is we're going to uh, use this task definition, which is very similar to the task definition that we have used uh, for the in-region deployment that the Docker Compose integration has created um, with some um, differences. So, um, well, the very first difference that I would like to call out is that uh, this task requires external compatibility. This is a new thing that we are introducing, this external, external launch type, uh, which is core to how ECS Anywhere works. Um, this is in addition to the existing launch type that we have that are EC2 and Fargate. Um, so external is this uh, launch type that we will use um, to uh, deploy this task. Uh, very similarly to uh, the previous uh, task definition, we are passing some of the variables which represents um, the, 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 the resources where uh, this stack is going to act upon. For example, we're using the very same queue that we have used um, at the beginning. We're also declaring uh, new folders because the structure on-prem is different. In particular, what we're doing is we are um, basically declaring a volume, a Docker uh, volume at this location, home Ubuntu data. And this data is a mount um, that we have on these uh, two instances, okay? So uh, the, we're going to uh, map the data into slash data inside the container and that represent basically an NFS share mount inside the container, which means that both uh, instances or in both containers, um, uh, actually both instances can access the same data. So regardless of where the application container is going to land, um, it will have access to the very same uh, data. Uh, we're also logging again into CloudWatch and we're um, adding this prefix external just to um, uh, make it clear uh, that this is a very different uh, log stream. Last but not least, we're obviously using the very same uh, container image that we used before. So this is the ECS worker uh, container image that we have used uh, for the in-region launch. This is obviously the very same thing. The other two things that I wanted to call out is that we're using the very same execution role and the very same task role um, that we use for the, um, for the in-region uh, deployment. Uh, this is literally a copy and paste from the actual um, uh, deployment that we have done uh, in the region, for, both for the execution role as well as for the task role. Um, this task role, for example, allows me to get access to this queue, for example. Uh, and this execution role allows me in the container and the task deployment on these two on-prem instances to pull from uh, ECR, for example. So uh, let's do this. Let's copy these um, uh, task definition and instead of doing this from a CLI, let's do this uh, from the uh, UI. So this is the uh, development UI uh, that we have uh, talked about. Um, as you can see, this is a, um, a, a high level view of the cluster that we have created. Let's go and try to create a new task definition uh, using ECS Anywhere. Uh, one thing that is important to note here is that there is a new uh, compatibility, as I was alluding to, which is called external, in addition to Fargate and DC2. So we're going to take uh, this one and let's move to the next step. As you can see here, the UI is very uh, similar to the previous one, just for the sake of this demo and make things a little bit more 
uh, agile, we're going to configure this um, via JSON and just paste um, the JSON uh, that I uh, discussed before. This is the same JSON that we had discussed. So let's save. Um, as you can see, it has filled um, everything in here and we will do create. All right, so our task definition name is ECS Worker External. This is version seven because there are some other experiments that I've been running uh, on this development environment that I had created previously other um, revisions. Um, that's it. As you can see, it requires compatibility external, the task execution role. This is my uh, container that includes the very same application. And this is the bind mount that I was alluding to before. So before we launch this, let's go here and let's see that um, I still had the, the watch Docker PS running in here. So what I'm expecting is that my task and my container is going to land on either one of these two because uh, ECS is going to pick one instance where to run that um, new task. So let's do this. Let's run this task. As you can see, I'm going to choose external as the launch type. This is a new thing that we're going to introduce when we support uh, and we make um, ECS Anywhere generally available. We're going to deploy to the cluster that we call external, and we're just going to have one uh, task for uh, simplicity. We're going to run this task now. Okay, the task has been created successfully and it's impending. Momentarily, this task should be uh, running on either one of these two instances. Here we go. The task is now running uh, on uh, which instance we can figure out. Okay, on instance A, um, ECS um, picked this uh, instance, instance A, to run this task. And the task is up and running. So let's see if my application still works um, in this new environment. So as I said, um, I have uh, mounted this um, macro share under data in here and I have the same thing um, in here where I have this directory data which includes uh, my um, uh, two folder destination folder and source folder let's see what we have in source let's move into data let's see what we have in source nothing and destination now we have a few files that we have been playing uh, around before uh, that's fine so what i'm going to do now um, instead of watching uh, docker ps i'm actually going to watch uh, the source folder here like this and I'm going to create a few files uh, from here because remember this is the very same um, folder so I'm going to do sudo touch uh, zero zero um, let's say h or let's do one two three four and five similar to how we did um, in the region. Oh, I created them uh, in here. So let's uh, should go in this other. Sorry about that. 
Okay, as you can see, we have, uh, we're watching that folder. Similarly, we're actually now going to watch uh, these um, uh, destination folder on these on this uh, instance. Uh, these are the previously um, uh, processed uh, in another uh, test that I've done. Um, now, what we're going to do is we're going to switch to again the SQS queue and we're going to enter again uh, those messages 001, 2, 3, 4, and 5. four and five so if we go back here what you should see is that these files are moving from the source folder into the destination folder and as you can see they're moving um, there, there is a delay in the application to wait 10 seconds before moving to the next one just to give a little bit more time to uh, show this but as you can see, these files are being processed uh, by the application, again, running on-prem this time, talking to the same SQS queue in the cloud and logging um, in the same uh, CloudWatch. So this is the log. I should see now um, in um, uh, external, here you go. This is the one that we, are, that we have just created. Um, and if I look at here, I see the very same logging um, that um, um, I used to have in the, with the in-region deployment. So this log has been generated as we speak uh, by that application running um, on-prem. So uh, this concludes our demo. The last thing that I wanted to show you, just um, as a bonus uh, before we uh, close down, are the instances that I've been using uh, to run uh, this demo on-prem. And what I've been using here is a couple of Raspberry Pis, just to give you a feeling of the flexibility that this on-prem deployment uh, may give you when we uh, make it generally available. Uh, we don't really care about the type of infrastructure. What we care is the operating system that you're running and whether or not it's going to be uh, supported. So these are actually two, the two Raspberry Pis that I've been using um, to, um, to deploy my task. Uh, one thing to note is that I didn't even bother to connect them to my local network. I just connected them via wireless. So that task that you have seen running um, and pulling from SQS and, pull, and pushing into CloudWatch, um, it has been running on either one of these two Raspberry Pis via wireless. Uh, that's, that's, that's the thing. Uh, thanks for watching and looking forward to hear what you think about this integration.